<risa> ella, todos lo conocen, pero bueno. René eh, estudió su licenciatura en Guadalajara eh, y después se fue a hacer el posgrado a la Universidad de Guanajuato, en donde se graduó en el 2015. Después hizo un par de postdocs, uno en Brasil, en el Observatorio de Balongo en Río de Janeiro y después un segundo postdoc en el Instituto de Astronomía de la UNAM para finalmente aterrizar con nosotros en el 2019. Correcto. Eh, su tesis y su trabajo se enfocaba a la química del medio interestelar en galaxias cercanas y desde el 2009 hace un montón de actividad de divulgación y de docencia y bueno, es el técnico académico en cargo, a cargo de, de nuestra área de divulgación. Bienvenido. Gracias. And, uh, uh... Okay, so this is a bit in Spanish because the slides are in Spanish, but I will, I will be speaking in English. And, and there probably are going to be a, little, uh, a couple of terms that are going to be difficult to translate. So bear with me with the language changes, language changes. And also bear with me because I am really nervous. I'm very used to talking in public, particularly with the general public and with schools and stuff. But this is making me nervous, very nervous. <laughs> so, so uh, I, ho I hope I don't, I, I don't mess it up. Okay, so, so this is a three in one talk. Um, I, I, I want to tell you a little bit of several things. So uh, it's going to be three parts. The first part is going to be a little bit of theory, if you want to call it that way, uh, particularly about the outreach model that we have been following and when we uh, do uh, hands-on activities with school children of different ages, uh, and a couple of examples of that. Then I'm gonna to move to uh, how, uh, well, some experiences we've had with media and with the messages we send to the media, and how media changes sometimes these messages, particularly in the context of the social cultural uh, uh, creation or something like that of ignorance. Uh, and uh, because it's a that, that's a very interesting topic that I wish I could have more time to pursue. I don't, but <laughs> but, I, but but I want to talk a little bit about of that. And in the third part, I'm going to be talking more uh, uh, practically about suggestions of how to make more effective <laughs> uh, outreach talks because that's the most common action uh, outreach action that people in the community here usually do. So. Let's go with the first part. Um, so it's a, a model of a, a, com a, a communication of science to the public, uh, to uh, school groups. So there is a, a, a whole zoo of taxonomy on how to call outreach and science communication. Uh, this is just an example of the words that are used in Latin America to call what we do. Um, I tend to use the one that I put in bigger in bigger letters, you know, <laughs> which is a, a public communication of science. I took this term from uh, sort of the establishment of outreach in the country. This is a term that, term that they're, they are do, they're using now. I, I like to use this term because I believe it's the one that um, uh, it's more of an umbrella term that, that includes many other or many of the other terms. Um, but there is a whole world on how we call these things and how, how we classify them. Just to put an example, uh, this is the, the taxonomic map of uh, uh, outreach activities and social communication of science, uh, public communication of science, of science I mean, in the middle of the of the map, the the letters are very small because this is a this is a, a paper actually. Uh, but I, I uh, but just uh, look at the names in this central square. So they they classify the activities on which the which publics are uh, directed to are are the uh, actions directed to, and uh, if you want uh, the effect to be. Uh, uh, a, a more, uh, I don't know how to say ludico in English, sorry, <laughs> like fun approach and more or more uh, on the side of informal learning. 
Uh, so there, there are there are different uh, ways of classifying this. This is just an example. Uh, so in one of these um, um, uh, lines is what we do with school children here, which is mainly in this side and in this side. So it's in the in the individual side, mostly in this side, but some parts are also from this side. So. Uh, in a, in a different way of, of researching this, uh, there is a different type of models that, that uh, people use to make or to put a frame in their uh, outreach actions. Uh, the traditional model, which is the deficit model, uh, which by the way, we don't use it most of the time, is, is where most of the time we are not using this one. Uh, it assumes that the audience doesn't know anything at all, that it doesn't have any, any reference and, or any previous knowledge. Uh, it, um, the the uh, scientist or the expert person is the one actually doing the communication uh, with no intermediaries. Uh, and the person doing the, the, the action, the outreach action and the communication action is the one uh, that decides uh, what wants to uh, be communicated and there is no uh, active agency on the people who are learning on the other side. Uh, so it's very one way and it's vertical. So uh, this is a traditional way and I'm not saying it's totally wrong. It's appropriate for certain things, uh, but it, when we are being with school children, it's mostly not appropriate. We need something different. So what uh, I'm going to, to give you just uh, a bit of context of uh, the, the what, what they call approaches to creating these models. So uh, Elaine Reynoso uh, uh, classified or proposed these five approaches to outreach and science communication. Um, it, that we can use to construct our model for, for the uh, actions and activities we want to do. So there are uh, five of these approaches. The first one is the educational approach, which is based in informal learning. Uh, so the, this approach is, it puts the action uh, in, well, one of the, some of the characteristics of this approach is that the learning is personal. Uh, it depends on context, so it's not the same if you are in a different context. Context is just just think about uh, social context, economic context, cultural context. It's different. Uh, it's free, which for our school activities, it's not, it's not always the case. And it's free, and and and, and it uh, with this free, I mean it's voluntary. Uh, in this approach. Uh, people go voluntarily to do this uh, to these uh, outreach actions and activities. Um, uh, it doesn't have very well defined objectives. It can be flexible, uh, and it can uh, occur in different environments. So it's not only in school. It can be outside. It can be in the street. It can be in at home. It can be in different places. That is the uh, informal learn informal learning approach. Then there's also the artistic and cultural approach, which main objectives are to say that science is important, that science is part of culture, and that this can be basically fun and pleasant. This is mostly what, what is used for. So um, the, the other three are the commercial approach, uh, which uh, treats uh, public communication of science as a source of income. Um, uh, and this is, uh, so it treats the, the, the people getting the message uh, as uh, uh, potential clients, which can be either buyers or sponsors. And so this is this is useful if you if you have an enterprise and you use uh, you do public communication science as a business, uh, which is done in different places, including in Mexico, although it's not very common. Uh, but if you go to Chile, there's a lot of this. Um, then there, there is the propagandistic approach. Uh, this is basically to promote a positive image of science. Uh, 
uh, and it is used to attract funding. Uh, so you go to, well, th th this is the approach that should be used if you go to authorities to ask for money to do your things. Uh, so it, and it's also used to, to increase interest and acceptance, uh, social acceptance of size. Uh, and the last one is the social political approach, uh, which is, uh, in my opinion, one of the most complex because assumes that science is not neutral. This is something I believe that science is not neutral, but it's a very difficult thing to, to study, for me at least. Uh, and that uh, the, de the development of science and technology has uh, important impacts in, in, so in, in society, in culture, in the environment. Uh, we, we kind of already have a knowledge of this. And, and if you went to watch Oppenheimer recently, there's a little bit of this uh, in that, but there's a much more than the film showed us about this. Just one example is that in the town they built for to have the scientists in the middle of, of the desert, there were indigenous peoples living there before, and they throw them out to build this town. So th this is just one thing. Uh, uh, so it's a very complex thing because you, you put in a balance all these impacts with what, uh, with the knowledge you're generating, which is very important too. So th this is something. Um, so uh, it tries to to um, give uh, the message that the people doing science, the scientists, uh, have uh, should have a, a commitment to society. So these are the five approaches. Uh, this is context. So what are we using for our uh, educational uh, hands-on activities with children and and in general with school uh, school children and young people? So we use a, a model uh, that, that uh, is not new. We didn't invent it, but we have been adapting it, sort of. Um, and it has uh, elements of informal uh, learning, and it's called a, a particip partic participative model. <laughs> uh, so it, it, we, we put mm, three main things in it, which is to know the audience, this is actually, this should be actually in every single model you, you use for every single outreach action to know your audience. In this one is we need to, to, to know uh, what the audience already knows. In this case, because it's school children, it's mostly to know which uh, grade they're in and their context. It's not the same if we, we do this with a school uh, in uh, in a small town uh, far away from Morelia, that if we do this in pick a, a nearby example in Kipling, for example, in the in a private school in an urban environment, it's different. So it's not just the age and the grade; it's also the context. Uh, so we need to adapt material, language, tone, everything to this context and and to the audience. In this model, communication is horizontal, so it's it's two way. So we let the children talk to us. It's not just talking to them or giving them instructions to how to do things. We ask them things. We uh, uh, ask them what they know, what they want to do. Uh, of course, it's guided, and we have a, an objective. I'm, I'm going to put two examples then, but it's very two way. Uh, so it can use. Uh, mediator people. So it, it, it doesn't have to be the scientist or the expert person doing this. For example, we have done this with teachers from the schools. Um, so they come here, we uh, tell them uh, about the activity, its objectives, how is the material used, and the, the content, the astronomical content of the activity. And, and they take it and put it in their schools with their children. Uh, so uh, this is this is something that this model has, so we don't have to be there uh, all the time. Um, and the third part is that learning is personal. This, this is what comes mostly from informal education, preferably voluntary, but as I said, it, 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 it's not always like this. So we have always gone to a, a talk where you have uh, 50 
um, uh, young people, like 15 year olds, and they clearly don't want to be there. And mm -hmm. we, we, we have all that gone to these talks and these activities. So um, it, it's not always the case that it, that it is voluntary, uh, but you can adapt and, and want to go. I, this is a connection. Okay, this is a connection to the last part. Uh, you can adapt when you see an audience like that. Uh, I'm going to leave it for the last part. And uh, the learning, uh, is, so it is really in the hands uh, of the people getting the knowledge. In this case, the, the, the school children and the young people. Uh, yeah. So if they want to learn, they're learning. We, don't, we cannot force them to learn. So how do you know your audience previously? They, they, in, in the case of school groups, uh, we ask the teachers and the directors of the schools uh, about how many which, uh, ages, uh, which is the context of the school. For example, it, uh, when they come from around here, uh, Morelos, Zapata, Socialista, uh, it is not the same uh, as if they come from Kipling or Sam or. That's okay. especially given point number three. I mean, learning is personal. So I agree with that. So, so then, I mean, just because you have a, a group of third graders, you cannot know much about what they personally know. Ah, okay. Right. So you, you interact with them a lot during the activity. So you can more or less see uh, how much. First of all, how much they want to be there. Uh, and second, more or less, how much do they know already? How much, um, what, what are their references? So uh, you make a lot of questions. Is, for example, we had like uh, uh, first graders last week, uh, but they, they, they didn't know how to read. Uh, so, um, the, the, you, you just start asked by asking them questions is have you ever seen the, the moon change shape for example uh, or what color is the sun uh, something things like that and you start like um like probing yeah is that the word uh, I don't I don't know if I'm explaining myself yeah did I answer the question more yes. or less okay <laughs> so, um and the last part is uh, uh, it, it can be fun, so it, 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 it doesn't have to be serious. Uh, that's, the last, that's the last part. Okay, so... So, examples. We ha I'm going to give two examples of this, and I'm going to try to go a little bit clearer because I thought I was going to, to take like 10 minutes for this, and I took 15. So... <laughs> um, an example is what we do for for uh, secondary uh, secondary school and, and uh, high school uh, to talk about the electromagnetic spectrum. So we have a set of lamps and and uh, light bulbs and stuff, uh, and we sort of make a spe uh, a spectroscopy. If you want to call it with, well, I'm going to give put a a, a picture later. Um, so the main message is that uh, observing astronomical objects in different type uh, in different parts of the spectrum gives you different information. That's a measure we want to give them. So how do we do this? We have a, a base concept that we want them to understand, which is what is the electromagnetic spectrum. And then we have uh, variants or secondary messages, like uh, the, the electromagnetic spectrum means the colors of light, uh, that different, uh, physical processes emit light in different parts of the spectrum. Uh, there's also a connection with global warming, talking about uh, the infrared and the atmosphere. Uh, so, so nowadays there is a lot of um, they they ask us a lot to make a connection with global warming. Global warming, so this works. Okay, <laughs> I'm getting more nervous now. I don't know why. <laughs> so the 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 target audience. Here is, like I said, uh, secondary and, and high school uh, in the context of school visit and science fairs. Uh, this is just a, 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 to, be, to put a basic list of what we have. There can be slides, but it's not mandatory. Uh, there are uh, the light bulbs and the lamps with different elements. We have a CD 
the silly uh, pieces to make like a sort of a, a diffraction uh, grid, uh, but several things. So the thing is, uh, th these are the lamps, and this is a picture taken. Uh, the, 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 there's the, <laughs> the other part, but you can see it in the left. So um, that's how they see it in their cell phones. Uh, this is a picture taken in a, with a cell phone. Uh, and if we, if you use the sodium lamp, this is, I, I took this one, uh, but this is also with a cell phone. Uh, so it, it, you can clearly see the, the, the lines there. So it's it's very uh, visual, uh, and and it's uh, an easy way to grasp the concept of what the electromagnetic spectrum is, and the different elements emit different things, so different processes will emit also in different ways. So it's 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 the way of doing it. And another example that we've recently been doing is about eclipses, because of course, why not? I mean, we're we're in there anyway. So the, the principal message to communicate, this is directed to low, 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 low uh, I mean to low ages, small or small ages. Um we've done this in in uh first, second, and third grade, but it can be done in more grade and you sort of adapt it and change it. So the main message here is that the moon revolves around the earth and, and, and that it can be it can uh, cover the sun or it can be covered by the earth. So there are also the, the specific variants and, uh, and uh, secondary messages. I'm just going to leave them there. Um, so uh, these, these activities follow the model that I have, ju I have just described. Uh, so, uh, but this is just the material. It doesn't really matter right now. Um, so th there is this uh, sort of, I don't know how to say this in English, plantilla, <laughs> that they can cut and paste and pin. Uh, this by, 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 by basic, uh, sorry, it, but this was made by originally by Zach uh, Medina y, y Rafa, and it was then changed by uh, Andrea and uh, Palmira, and it's currently being adapted again. So the, these are this is constantly changing. Also, we are readapting uh, uh, according to our experiences with the children. This is literally yesterday. So uh, the, 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 the children cut the sun and the earth, and they put a small and it, you, you don't see it here, but it's the the, the shadow of the moon uh, or of the earth, and in, and it it revolves around the earth, uh, and we have. Also, models of the Earth and the Moon, and a big ball that the, that is the Sun, and we put the children to run around the, the Sun with the Earth, and then the one holding the Moon is running around the Earth. Uh, so they 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 get a more uh, sort of spatial relationship between the three. Uh, okay, so this is the first part. So I don't know if you want me to make a stop and ask questions, or we should leave it to the end. I think the end. <laughs> I think the end. Okay. So the second part is media and the social culture, so, uh, social and cultural construction of ignorance. Um, <laughs> the ET, ET, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, the, the main issue here is that we depend on media to, to get our message, uh, message across uh, or through to most people. Uh, and when I talk about media, it's not. Uh, I, I mean, social media is media, and this is something we all need to understand. Social media is media, and it has the same principles. Uh, they, it, they, they live off at all of them, massive media, but also social media. So the, the one thing they really care about is how many people is watching. It's the only thing they really care. They don't care about the message. They really don't, honestly. So, uh, so the one the things they care about is ratings, clicks, views, traffic, interactions. Uh, depending if it's mass media or social media or, or websites. Uh, so, how do you get that? Uh, the the most the critical way to get that is to have an emotional connection with the audience. Uh, that's the that, that's the way you generate this. 
if people has an emotional connection with your content, then they, then they will view it, share it, and interact with it. Uh, uh, so how do we do this when we're trying to communicate that our, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know, <laughs> that there are, there is a star that is engulfing a planet somewhere or something like that, no? Uh, or I don't know, anything that you can imagine from your own work. Uh, so so that, there are ways to do this. The, the emotions, oh, okay. It, having an emotional connection also allows media to generate controversy. Controversy generates, again, interactions. So the, the emotions that are tapped mostly are anger and fear. So we have the end of the world every few months. <laughs> and, uh, and we have, uh, and, uh, and also identity questions. So that's why people tap a lot into, for example, gender and LGBTQ issues to generate controversy. So to generate traffic. Uh, but this also goes in the, I mean, the type of examples, I have examples, I'm gonna show you examples. Of something like, um, the small girl in the rural town somewhere that I'm, I'm going to talk about the candidate now, but so, sold jelly pots to uh, to pay for her studies or something. Uh, that that sells because it's an uh, identity question. You you have um, an emotional connection with something that you identify with. Uh, and uh, the last one that is less tapped to because it's less negative, but but is is uh, oh, uh, oh, oh is also something that is tapped a lot into this. That's why there is all that there is all sorts of fake images and fake pictures because they are they tend to be much more awesome literally than the real thing. Particularly if the real thing is a star. Or uh, I don't know how many kiloparsecs from here, or or a galaxy. I don't know how many megaparsecs from here that we have a a, a a lot of data, but not a pretty picture. So uh, that, that 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 is why we have fake images. So okay, <laughs> let me tell you. Ah, what happened? I had a, another slide. I don't know what happened. Let me just check if it if it um. Okay, I, it it changed the order, so it's here. So this is this is there is a a, a buzzword called agnotology, and uh, uh, this is the study of the social uh, cultural construction of ignorance, which is what I'm I've been telling you about, and the the most um, the, the biggest thing that 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 uh, is the example of of this is the, the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s ad campaigns for cigarettes. But they promoted smoking as a healthy habit, even for pregnant women. This is true. <laughs> so it's like now scientific evidence on the effects of smoking. And if you can see in the small letters, no adverse effects on the nose, throat, or sinuses of the group smoking this brand. So this is the big example. This is, of course, mass media. It's magazines, it's TV, it's radio. This is the 70s, the, the, the 60s, and the 50s. Uh, even they promoted the health cigar. So um, this, this is a big one. There are several examples of this. Uh, uh, but the, the thing is that this is changing. Yeah, 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 you can read that now. We laugh now, but this was re real. I mean, it, it made a lot of people smoke, literally. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, but there are more examples. And the point is that this is changing now because social media, it's, it, it does the same thing, but in a, in a different way. It's not only the big corporations <laughs> and the governments trying to change the message. It's everyone with a social media account. That can do this. That, that can do the same thing. Uh, so I'm gonna go now to examples. Uh, so we put this ad when the so-called green comment in February was over there. There was a lot of buzz in the media that people wanted to see it, etc. So uh, I I decided to make like a small guide uh, how to see this. 
Uh, why? Because media were, was, were saying that this could be seen uh, with the naked eye during the day. Uh, so it's it's double. It's not only for well, okay. Yes, please laugh. <laughs> um, uh, and also there is the thing about the, the, the period of the comic. Every single news piece or article or post or whatever said that it had a period of 50,000 years. What is the reality? This thing had an eccentricity of one, so it's parabolic. So there is no period, literally. That 50,000 uh, 50, number is because the, the algorithm that calculates the ephemeris of the comment puts the number 50,000 when the, the eccentricity is very close to one. <laughs> but everybody quoted this number, including, and I'm gonna, including UNAM, <laughs> Gazeta. I didn't write this and I'm gonna go, I'm not gonna go down. <laughs> because, <laughs> no, no, that, that number, that number is the, the, the that name is the, how do you call it, the redactora? Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's an interview. I'm not gonna say who's the interview with. <laughs> Look at it if you want. Uh, but but the person interviewed voted the fifty thousand. I'm not gonna say who the, who the name is. <laughs> Look at it if you want. <laughs> but Rene, yeah. Already, once you put that, that, it has no figures. It has no nothing. It's already very hard to approach your message. Your, ah, yeah. your message already this is one. on a different. No, the one that. This one. It's already on a different level, no? Well, there's one, there was, there's a picture there, but there's yeah. too many small letters. Yes, yes, I understand. So people who read it already, there are a lot of obstacles. I, I get it entirely. The, uh, um, I this is I'm awesome. always... I think it just shows how difficult this is. Yes, yes. The, um, the, this one in particular had a double uh, objective which is uh, to tell people how to watch it, because how to look for it, because people really wanted to look for it. Uh, it became an, a big thing in media, uh, but also to try to make a little bit for the name and the 50,000 number controversy. Uh, that's why I, I, there's the, the big paragraphs after. I put them in the end, so most people won't reach that <laughs> in the reading, but some people do. So uh, those people are the ones that are going to learn a little bit more about it. Uh, the, the picture is a real picture because that's the other thing. Most of the pictures in media were false. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I selected here some that had the, the, the real picture, but as an example of, of fake pictures, the new green comet is coming in Shimura, which is currently in the sky. And if you Google now Green Comet or Cometa Verde, you're gonna get this new species in Spanish, the ones in the left. And every single picture there, except the one in Expansión is fake. So people have an, an unrealistic image of how a comet looks in the sky. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you say, and even if you send them the picture, we, you can send the media the picture and they're still gonna use something that gives them more clicks. Uh, so this is generating ignorance. This is sort of undeliberate in the sense that their main objective here is not to generate ignorance, is to have clicks. Uh, but okay, <laughs> uh, did, did, did I answer more? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, this is just an example. This is my Facebook. So this is just an example of the types of things. It's like we, we say, oh, this comet is long period. We, it has a rather great comet. And you can see it in very dark skies, like, like observatory astronomy. And media is the green comet hadn't been seen in thousands of years. And it will be observed in dark skies of the observatory. So not, not, not as an example. And then social media. Social media is the green comet will be seen naked eye will not be coming back in thousands of years. And you can watch it, you can see it only in the observatory. It's like uh, this type of changes occur all the time with media. And, and sometimes it's just a couple of words you change and the message changes entirely. And again, it's generating ignorance. 
So, okay, more examples. Uh, Renee, this, ah, yeah. this reminds me of when we had the uh, of the room. Oh, yes. Yeah, the, uh, the, we had an event in Zimzumsa. People thought they could only see the eclipse of the moon from Zimzumsa. So oh, yeah. 10,000 people went to Zimzumsa. Yeah, yeah. I guess the rest of the party lunches is good. No? Yeah, I can't see here. This happened to me during the 2017 eclipse. Uh, I was, uh, uh, they gave me some of the interviews of the Instituto Astronomia because there, were, there weren't enough people that wanted to answer interviews. So I volunteered and I, won, I got one of the big ones, Aristegui Noticias. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't a, a woman, when I'm watching the clips, I, I was in the, in the roof of my building. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, she literally asked me, so you are there watching the, the clips? Yeah, I'm at home. Uh, but why? Why, why, why are not you at? Una, you work there. No, but you can watch it from anywhere. <laughs> I, I, she really couldn't understand why I was at home in, 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 in not a not the place where people were. And he's staying it himself? And he's staying it himself. <laughs> so it, 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 by the way, it's the biggest interview I've ever, ever had in terms of audience <laughs> and the name of the reporter. Well, the, the journalist. I say it's a very smart person. Yes, yes, yes. This is exactly my point. See, she is famous for being a smart person and an educated person. So if she couldn't get that I was at home watching the eclipse, because you could you could see it from basically the whole of the city and half of the country. That, that's exactly my point. That's exactly my point. Okay, uh, talking about the eclipses and the moon, you you always have the super moon, bloody blue, strawberry, whatever moon. Uh, this also generates misinformation. But this is misinformation that generates ignorance. And with this type of things, we decided to not fight. Well, I decided to not fight. <laughs> Just go with the flow. Do you think that we have some fault on this with that? Uh, giving priority and outreach to trivial things. I, I have a friend, he's a physicist that has a very strong, uh, and he, he, I think he exaggerates, but, but he thinks that all events, I, I know this is a lot of work for you, <laughs> all events related to eclipse, uh -huh. eclipses, like the ones that are coming, are useless because uh, an eclipse is a very boring thing, scientifically. Uh -huh. <laughs> so so it, it's really a problem that we are giving importance to trivial things, and rather probably we should try to make outreach to try to understand interesting physical processes? Um, I get the point, and I have thought about it uh, more than once. I think that it's a, 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 a pyramid thing. Most of the people in, uh, talking about the country, most of the people in the country are on the base level in terms of their interest and what they already know uh, and what they want to know. So most of, most of the people will, uh, and this is very hard for us, but will never be interested in more complex physical processes or more, more complex astronomy. They, they just don't have an interest in it. Because, most, because their interest is what I'm, uh, my job and my family and what I'm going to eat tomorrow. So uh, it's, it, this, is, uh, this is my opinion. Uh, so yes, we can do outreach on other topics or more complex topics, but it's gonna reach the tip of the pyramid. It's not gonna reach the, the base. So probably the super moon has so many, so much uh, visibility because we emphasize that whatever happens to the moon is interesting when it's actually not. So. Well, the, well, I think it's, it's, it's mundane to you because you are a physicist, but it's not mundane to the average population because yeah. they, they don't care about what happens to galaxies. And <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't know what galaxy is. Uh, uh, the, the thing is, most of the time, we are not making a fuss about it. The media is making a fuss about it by themselves. So the, the, uh, this is a, a bit of, it, I, it, it is a conundrum. Uh, do you make a little bit of fuss about it just to give more accurate information? Because the media is going to make a fuss about it anyway. And they are probably going to give inaccurate information. So if you, if you, like kind of go a little bit ahead and make a fuss about something that may be trivial for us 
uh, but with accurate information, maybe the media sometimes takes what you give them. Not all of the time, but sometimes they do. Um, uh, and, and it's a very interesting uh, discussion. We can continue this later. Yeah. And what your experience in terms of uh, the, the media changing what you gave them? Uh, we, we do have... My experience is that uh, we were making an uh, announcement or whatever. We read that, uh, we wrote the, the whole thing, and they wrote whatever, and they changed things, and they give actually misinformation. Yes. Uh, this, this is a, a recent example. This is a, a simple thing because it's just a, a ball line in the sky. So I, I put this out. Uh, there, there was a ball line in the, uh, that was seen in some parts of the state. So I got us several calls from the media asking what it was. So I put this out and I talked to the media and I told them what a bolide is, uh, that, that these things disintegrate in the atmosphere, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what the media wrote. I never said meteorite. No, no, no. <laughs> and, and my face is there. <laughs> I never said meteorite. <laughs> I'm beginning to comment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and, and, and I, I didn't put more examples of this, but the, the, the pictures that the media were putting out were of SpaceX uh, rockets. And that was the one that was, that was seen in, in the South of the state. Yeah, that's my profile picture on Facebook. <laughs> actually on WhatsApp. So I, this is sometimes, this is actually, I'm not, okay, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm, but uh, this person has my WhatsApp uh, asked me uh, uh, leave off. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, so that, that's my WhatsApp profile. Literally. Which he used without my permission, by the way, but I don't care. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to say something related to what uh, Beto said. Uh -huh. That sometimes, I mean, when you correct information, maybe it will reach the one person among the Tens of thousands who are listening to that who might actually get interested in science and all this. Yeah. And what is the probability that the person that is named in the Gaceta mm -hmm. actually said that it was real? Because probably it's just the Gaceta title. Just in this case. Yeah, in the in the case of Gaceta, I, we, we don't know uh, for sure on, unless we ask this person. Uh, in well, it it's in quotes, so uh, I yeah, hope that that is not. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, that is the point. Okay, I'm gonna go quickly here because it's getting late. So just to give you the classic example of, uh, if you if you put in Google meteorito fin del mundo, it's going to give you the most recent example of of the the meteorite that is gonna end the world, and you have. The, this is the classic headline, and, and this is not just a small media, this is a big media. So it's always the end of the world. And it, and by the way, the, the easiest way the media, um, they, they give legitimacy to their to their notes is claiming NASA's sense. <laughs> and it's not someone, it's NASA. <laughs> like it's a person, like a one person. <laughs> Uh, that's what it's, it's a very interesting scientific subject. The third, the one in the bottom, it's, it's, uh, it's this one, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't see that part. <laughs> and it said that if your gases, your personal gases, were visible, would you be afraid? <laughs> From going to the point. melting one gas so uh, that your friends can see it. <laughs> so that was the example. They were actually talking about drones that would detect color of gases in factories to tell you if the procedures were going well or not. It's so not that so was like the thing sorry. that was you would you mind if your friends could see your gases. <laughs> so because 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 media is interested in traffic and clicks, that's why clickbait exists. Uh, clickbait exists for exactly that reason. So you can talk about anything, and the, and the headline is always going to be clicked right. So why do you think people were fascinated by the, by the black hole? Because they were afraid that they were going to be sucked by the black hole? <laughs> I think that it, that it was a mixture of all of those. There was a, maybe some, some 
uh, fear, but uh, I think that tap deeply into awe, uh, uh, which is not as easy as tapping into fear and anger. In fear and anger are the most easy ones to tap into. Uh, and also there was a little bit of identitary things because it was promoted as our black hole. It's the, it's the Mickey Way's black hole, but the way that it was framed is this is our black hole. The so it, MIT it's, it's seven one, people were much more fascinated by the first one. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was in ninety seven. Yeah, ah, okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, I, I think that that mostly into up and maybe a little bit of feeling part of history, uh, um, because that that, that is. Maybe between awe and identity things, but if you feel part of a big thing, uh, it makes you feel important. So people felt that they were part of something big. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, just this is the ex classic examples NASA, end of the world, whatever. Uh, by the way, this is the latest one in March. Uh, I, I just Googled the, the uh, or, well, Wikipedia, the name of the, of, this thing had for one day a one in the Torino scale, in, in which is from zero to ten, uh, and a few days later it came back to zero, and the end of the world was no more. <laughs> so, so th this is the way it goes. Okay, uh, uh, um, uh, how do we use this? That that is the point. We can use this for our advantage. Uh, so. This is an example. No, not this one. This is Jacopo. <laughs> this one. So the, the, the headline is about observing planets in the telescope. That, that is interesting for people. But what we're actually promoting is Viernes Astronomy. So uh, we promote more the observing part. And we, we have been doing this this year, and it's kind of working. Uh, so we are promoting more the observing part than the talk. Sorry for those who are giving the talks. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes people go. So don't be sorry, <laughs> because more people is gonna, are going to see your talk. <laughs> um, so we, we kind of use this low level uh, to give the media something that they want to put uh, and they want to distribute because we, it will generate traffic and clicks, which is observing planets through a telescope. Uh, and and we use it to promote our our, our uh, outreach talks. So this this is low level. We could do more about this, but it's there is a very delicate line between representing an institute that needs to be taken seriously and using this big way. So this type of of things. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Clickbait. Yeah. Have it. <laughs> a bit. Okay, just, okay. And of course, I cannot go out without talking about aliens in Mexican Congress. <laughs> just to say that if you put aliens in el Congreso in, 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 in Google, you're getting so many things. <laughs> this is in Spanish, but the worst thing is the English results. Yeah. Aliens in Mexican Congress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in English, this is horrible. This is Reuters, AP, The Independent, Washington Post. In Korean, in Japanese, I got messages from both from, from those, those countries. Italy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Don't don't be don't be surprised if in your next next uh, meeting, uh, international meeting of whatever, somebody makes you a comment about this. Many of the international news are critical. Well, that, that was good. Fortunately, yeah. for, fortunately for, for them, maybe, but <laughs> for us, I don't know. It's, uh, I, I, well, honestly, I am embarrassed about this. But, but who in Congress allowed this? Uh, 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 this is one deputy that uh, organized the stuff. <laughs> No, but the, 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 there is a committee or commission or something like that that I, I think needs to approve these things. So there was a commission also. Uh, <laughs> but it was a, a personally organized event, that is true. Um, the, the, this, this is an example of 
uh, social, so, social and cultural creation of ignorance that is very deliberate. Uh, so, okay, they are using a, a hot topic about uh, life in the universe, basically, uh, that is interesting for many people uh, to induce ignorance so people will not talk about other things that may ma matter most uh, or more. And that is the point. So this is a, this is an example of deliberate creation of ignorance uh, that we just have. Th thank you for giving me the example from it. <laughs> okay, but, we can talk a lot about this. This was given certain legitimacy because of the hearings in the U.S. Yes, right. So it's just Mexico going one better with evidence. <laughs> <laughs> And today, yes. NASA releases the results of the uh, official uh, study. Yes, yes, and they announced that they are creating a, a mission for NASA, NASA to yeah. investigate yeah. Uh, now called UAPs. So th th this was already announced today, the creation of a division for in NASA to, to investigate UAPs. So yes, it's given legitimacy because of that. Um, I think they are using it for more or less the same purposes than here, to deliberately Create ignorance yeah. and divert attention. That's very big. Uh, <laughs> you think that's a strong statement? Do you think NASA, the U.S. government, is doing that? No, no, to not strictly. NASA. attention. So you think, for example, David Sperber the con the con serves for that? He's a, the, he's the, a, I was thinking about the audience in the Congress. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the Congress people, uh, the Congress people that made that audience. I, I, that, that is what I'm saying. Uh, and NASA, in the end, is a part of the government, so they can receive orders. But they, uh, it is very strong statement. That's why I say it's my opinion. It's not a fact. <laughs> okay, and let me go on <laughs> because it, 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 it's it, time is almost one, and I haven't gotten to the suggestions part, and I want to go into that. So if you give me a few minutes more, I can go to the third part very quickly. So. Let's get out of the aliens for a moment. <laughs> and I know what media knows about this. Um, and let's get into suggestions to make more effective clubs. The first thing that I want to say is that this is not a, an objective measurement of efficiency. I cannot say that that your efficiency will increase in zero point whatever. I know. I cannot say that. This is uh, in in the, the way we have experience, I have and we have on what goes better. So number one, again, is getting to know your audience. It's the age, it's the uh, uh, formal education level, it's the context, socioeconomic and cultural context, it's how much interest they have, uh, it's, um, if it's voluntary or or captive. Uh, and I, I put there, se vale preguntar. So you can ask the audience things during the talk, in the beginning or during the talk, so you can probe and you can you say gauge rather I don't know the verb probe the, the the audience so you can adapt that which is one of the later uh, points there. There is no general public. All audiences are different. Uh, so if they tell you you're giving a talk for the general public, that is probably going to be difficult. Uh, so for example, for Vienna's Astronomia, that's a very heterogeneous audience. Uh, because it's general public. Uh, there is no general public. So what, what do you do when you have a general public talk? Assume that you have more or less the, the uh, uh, education for formal education level of prepa, more or less, of high school, uh, and try to adapt the talk, the talk in the moment where, uh, when you see more or less the composition of the audience. Um, okay, going on. Uh, captive audiences like school groups, uh, so they try to identify who wants to be there and who is interested. And even if it sounds counterintuitive, direct the talk to that person. Uh, the people that don't want to be there, but they, are, they have to be there, are not going to listen to you anyway. So, Try to identify who wants to listen. There's no way to direct. There's no way of knowing that while you're giving the talk. 
I mean, can you tell who wants to be here today in the audience? Oh. <laughs> well, I think that here most people want to be here because <laughs> because this is not a captive audience. Nobody is here As because they told them to. As the I can are, you, are, are any of you here non voluntarily? <laughs> Apparently not. Okay. Uh, but they can say. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm here only for the book. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but the thing is, you, 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 you kind of can see that in the in the people, particularly in in students, you can see uh, uh, which of them really don't want to be there and which of them kind of want to be there, and that's why you ask questions and try to make them interact, because you can more or less see who wants to be there. Uh, okay, uh, previous knowledge is not only uh, concepts, it's references, so people will not have the same references, so if you make an analogy or a, or a comparison uh, or something like that, or it means some, or stuff like that, it's going to be different depending on the context. Quick example, I was giving a talk about, about black holes, and I, I this is a talk that I have given in different places for students. Um, uh, and I had a reference to Interstellar uh, that worked very well here, but it didn't work at all when I was in in, uh, in a small town away from here. They, they have never seen the film and they, they didn't know that the film existed. Even if they haven't watched it here in Morelia, even if they haven't watched it, they know it exists and they may know what it's about. But up over there, they had no idea that the movie existed. So that's a reference that doesn't work. So I, I had that, I had to adapt at, in the moment to talk about what I wanted to talk about without the reference of the film. So those references need, need to be taken into account. Uh, okay, uh, next. Uh, try to minimize the use of text. If you eliminate text entirely, it works. I'm not saying that every talk should have no text. I'm not saying that. But if you minimize text, it works in my experience, a bit better. And try to minimize the use of plots. Uh, if you are going to use a plot, it needs to be very conceptual, very simple. Uh, it has to be very visual and try to over, overlay the axis names in Spanish. Uh, people is not going to understand a plot from a paper at all, even if you explain it. it that, that is going to be visually I'm going to use a hard word. It's going to be visually aggressive for the audience uh, to put up a, a, a plot, a, a paper plot in the talk. So try to make a conceptual plot about the same thing. You can do it. I have done it. Uh, but it's more of a, a conceptual plot. Okay. Uh, and the, um, yeah, okay. I think we are seeing that. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. What is a conceptual plot? Um, like a cartoon. I'm sorry, like a cartoon. Like a cartoon, yeah, yeah, like a cartoon. For example, I, 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 I'm going, I can show you an example later. I have it in another talk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, okay. So the next point is adapt and modify. Uh, sometimes uh, th this is mostly. Uh, oh, I, I mean, during the talk, you arrive there. Maybe the audience is different than what they told you it was. May, uh, maybe it's late or the time is consuming like I'm doing now. <laughs> that maybe the topic is not working. Uh, uh, maybe the audience might be lost because of whatever. It can be that sometimes it's literally there's noise outside, so you can you, lo you lose the audience. Uh, the references again, uh, or maybe the, 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 the audience, you expected a small audience and it, it's very big, or you expected a big audience and there's three people there. So try to, oh, there's no light, there's no electricity, that, that, that's common. And, and uh, so try to adapt and modify during the talk as much as possible. Uh, don't be set, or like hard set on, uh, on a way of doing your talk. And that being said, slides are support. Uh, the slides are not the talk, the talk is you. You are there to talk. You are the one giving the talk. You can give the talk without slides if needs if needs be. Uh, so the slides are support. They are very useful, particularly 
for showing things because you want to show things and in astronomy you have you sort of have to put there is an okay this is a joke there is an in, informal law for every astronomy talk that needs to be a Hubble picture <laughs> that inform, informal okay um so you can use other resources like demonstrations activities materials even if it's a talk and not a hands-on thing so you can use something uh it, it, you can even not use slides i made i i, I went once to sim uh and they wanted me to give a talk and i asked i asked them do they have a lot of questions yes they have other questions is it okay if i don't give any slides yeah can i just start a little bit and then let them ask me okay that audience was right for that. Not all of the audiences are right for that. But I, I literally didn't, didn't I, I didn't have the computer, didn't even have the computer. I just have my cell phone with some notes. And, and I said, if I need to show something, I have the, my cell phone screen. Uh, that worked in that audience. Okay. Uh, videos, animations, etc., etc. Okay. Uh, and the last point is storytelling. This comes from social media. Social media uh, does a lot of, uh, of this storytelling. Um, if you tell a story, it's easier for people to emotionally engage. And as I said before, <laughs> uh, that's what that's when people start paying attention when they have something, some emotional connection to what you you are saying. So I, I get that we're academics, we're not <laughs> storytellers, no somos cuentacuentos, but uh, try to maybe include an anecdote some, somewhere, maybe not like as a whole the talk being as a whole story, but maybe include an anecdote, include the story of a person uh, as a story, not as a biography, it's different. You're not telling fact, biographical facts about someone, you're telling a story. Uh, and that helps humanize what you're trying to say. Uh, and this is the end. So this is when a talk doesn't go well with me, I feel like this. <laughs> Talking about references and memes. So this is the end of my talk. Thank you. Because it's always good to enter the last meme. <laughs> Okay, so we don't have much time for questions. And Sorry, there's been a lot of it's okay. There's been a lot of interest, and people have asked various questions and made comments. And maybe a couple of questions, one or two questions. Go ahead, please. Yeah. Tienes pensado como no sé un curso o algo así. Sé que ya tienen demasiado trabajo, pero pues si una clase para los estudiantes, incluso los investigadores, en donde, no sé, nos enseñen como desde cómo usar la voz, que a mí, por ejemplo, cuando empecé a dar talleres, yo terminaba el siguiente día, o ese Está mismo día, sí. o hasta para cómo planear y sistematizar un taller. Y, no sé, entre eso también eh, ensayar los talleres que ya se tienen aquí para tener como un estándar de que independientemente si yo tengo un estilo de, de cómo enseñar el taller y el compañero otro, que se dé, que nos aseguremos de que la información que se está dando es la misma. O hasta cómo usar los telescopios, porque muchos no nos animamos a, a estar en las observaciones, no sabemos ni cómo usarlo. ¿no? Uh -huh. Entonces, no sé si... Eh, fíjate que se, se ha propuesto en, en otras ocasiones... Eh, que sea como tipo curso o algo así, o capacitación o como quieran decir. Este, la, la bronca justamente es, es encontrar tiempo de rato de nosotros. También ustedes tienen, sobre, los más tienen muchas clases eh, y, y pues, tienen su chamba también. Entonces, eh, sí ha sido un poco de impedimento encontrar tiempo para hacer algo más sistemático. Lo que hemos hecho hasta ahorita es que a, a través de las propias actividades es como vamos haciendo, este, digamos, como le llamamos como capacitación. Uh -huh. Entonces, por ejemplo, si tenemos evento y vamos a poner algunos talleres, pues los primeros se apuntan y los que se apuntan, entonces hacemos un, una, 
una reunión previa para explicar los talleres, cómo funcionan, etc. Este, o, por ejemplo, con el Paseo de las Ciencias, cuando hay alguien que quiere participar del Paseo de las Ciencias, pero nunca lo ha he hecho antes, le decimos, vente un día que lo estemos haciendo para que veas cómo eres. Este, y además, les, para, en, para el Paseo en particular, les hicimos un video explicativo. Este, entonces, hay, hay al, algunas cosas así. Igual con los telescopios. Hemos hecho alguna, alguna capacitación antes, eh, pero también eh, es un poco al, sobre la marcha en términos de, si no sabes usarlo, eh, pégate a una de las observaciones de bienes de astronomía, eh, particularmente que son las que son recurrentes, y ahí vas aprendiendo. Este, es lo que hemos hecho hasta ahorita. La verdad es que a mí me encantaría poder hacer algo más sistemático, este, pero entre que, entre que sí estamos bastante saturados nosotros, y también ustedes tienen otras actividades, hasta ahorita no hemos encontrado la forma. Podremos buscar alternativas. ¿no? ¿Y tal periodo intersemestral pudiera funcionar un poco? O sea, las vacaciones. No, no, no. no, no, no. Okay. Pero les pregun pregunto. No, el periodo intersemestral sería en enero, ¿eh? ah, ya, una, okay. semanas en enero y otras sí. semanas en julio. Okay, pero entiendo. no en vacaciones. Entiendo, en entiendo. Julio ya, pues... Podría ser, podría ser. Podemos buscar, podemos buscar alternativas. Este, lo más que me pasa en los equipos es... Está consumiendo un montón. ¿Cómo It depends a lot on the context, uh, on the composition of the audience, uh, but it also, well, most, mostly that, mostly that. Um, so, for example, in Vienna's astronomy, which is, is it, it is a difficult audience in the sense that it's, like I said, very heterogeneous. So, uh, the, the approach for me would be to uh, have an analogy that can be understood for more or less young adults. Children is difficult. Um, young adults or adults that relates to their daily life. For example, if you want to explain a disc, there is CDs, buying, well, now vinyls are more popular, uh, <laughs> stuff like that. So have, have that. And if you have it there, it's, it's even, I have used even like Tupperware tops, Tupperware lids, to explain this, you know, whatever you have in hand. So that, that anal that, that use that analogy, and then uh, you can probe the audience, you can ask them, So am I, am I being clear? Uh, does this is good for you? Uh, you? You can have that interaction at the moment. Uh, and if you have a more specific audience, then you can make the, the choice beforehand to what analogy you can use, what example you can put, uh, or, or how, how, how much uh, informality you can, you can ask. To the concert. Uh, my my and my rule of thumb would be that if it's outreach, don't make it formal. It, it, it needs to be informal. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not serious. Uh, it, it, formality and seriousness is a different thing. Okay. okay, we have to try to wrap up here, but uh, before we do that, uh, are there any questions or short comments online on Zoom? There is. Something. There is? No, there's nothing on it. Okay. Well, in that case, let's thank Renee for a great. Thank you.